This is probably the hardest thing about marketing data science today. One of the most in-demand models right now is the marketing mix model. It is like the holy grail for marketers because the model promises, promises to estimate the ROI, the efficiency of all marketing channels at the same time. This is uniquely different from an experiment, A-B test, a geo experiment, which might take two to three months to run and will get you the ROI of one channel, right? And many big companies might have 10 or 12 channels that they're running at the same time. So what makes this so challenging is model validation and model evaluation. So in a typical machine learning program, we might have evaluation metrics that we're looking at. So it could be accuracy. It could be F1 score. It might be something like MAPE, right? Mean absolute percentage effect or similar, something like a RMSE, a root mean square error. But here's what's so different about a marketing mix model. So oftentimes one of the biggest questions that the business is trying to answer is how can we most efficiently, how can we optimize the allocation of our marketing budget across different channels? So if we are, for example, investing in YouTube ads and we're investing in social media ads, such as on Instagram or TikTok, and we're investing in ads in movie theaters. Imagine if you're like Samsung or Apple, right? You want to know which ones have the best ROI so you can shift more money into those channels. But as it turns out, if you're comparing models, so let's say models with different hyperparameter values, you might have a model that has a better mate, but actually doesn't really get you the right answer on relative efficiencies and relative ROIs between channels. And I'm going to show you how I did this. So I simulated a relatively simple marketing mix model. There's only two media channels and they are fairly correlated, which is in real life. The correlation is about 0.3. So it's not crazy, but it, they are correlated. There are two years of weekly data and it's a geo based, um, hierarchical model. So there are five geos in there as well. And then I run this in two different ways. One is with very uninformed prior. So I'm not really telling the model any additional in information. And then the second time I run it is with an informed prior. This is very common in marketing mix models where you run an experiment on one channel and then you, it helps pin down the multicollinearity problem by saying, I think I have external information about this channel. Here's some additional information that you can use to then run the model and estimate the ROIs. And if you are unfamiliar with how multicollinearity can wreak havoc in a marketing mix model, go back, check out some of my other videos. I talk about this concept specifically. So let's walk through first what I did with the simulating data. So we know exactly what is going on. First is I set up all the parameters. I set up the functions that are pretty common, the ad stock and the hill. And so we know the true hyperparameter value. So for example, tau, the baseline is 20, beta one, beta two are these coefficients uh, that affect the ad stock, its impact on the, the eventual outcome, the KPI. We know exactly what those true values are. And importantly, we know what the true value is of the ROAs on each of the two channels. And so you can see here, we can calculate it specifically. We know the ground truth in this case, the overall ROAS is a 1.168 and there are two media channels. Media channel one has a ROAS of 0.98. So it's actually slightly negative. Uh, and the other channel is pretty good. It has a return on ad spend of 1.35. And importantly, we would see this if we knew, if we got the right answer, if we were able to actually observe this, most likely the business would want to shift money from media one into media two. So that would be the optimal business decision that would come out of this. Because right now for every hundred dollars of media spend in channel one, we're only getting 98 back. So forget even about profits. We're not even getting back revenue on the ad spend. So down at the bottom, you can see that I have, these are the priors that I used in the model and they are fairly uninformed. So even like beta one, beta two, I'm giving them a mean of one, but a standard deviation of two. So that's a pretty wide range that these betas could be. And I'm just feeding the data and I'm letting it see what happens. And so the results are here. 
where basically it sees almost no difference between the channels. So it has an overall estimated ROAS of 1.06, which you remember the true one is 1.16. So, but importantly, it has media channel one and media channel two virtually identical, right? So the model here would say media, media one is just equally as efficient as media two, even though we know the ground truth, that is not true. And that is going to affect our marketing budget because we would probably keep whatever the spending pattern is that we have now that got these results. We would say, okay, the ROIs are, are basically the same. We're not going to shift any money around. And that would be a bad business decision. But now look at the performance metric. So mate, for example, is an 8.78 and the MAE is about 8.85. So just remember those numbers. Uh, lower is better for the most part. So the mean absolute error is 8.85 and the mean absolute percent error is 8.8%. So now look what happened when I give it some more informed priors. So the idea here is that let's say we ran an experiment on media spend two, and we're able to back into a really good estimate of the beta two coefficient. We know the ground truth was 2.2. And let's just say that we were able to know this and we give it a small standard deviation of 0.25. So this would be a relatively informed prior saying we have a lot of information on this channel. And in this case, I didn't change anything else other than feeding it the fact that we might have had this experiment on media channel two and we're going to feed it that information. And now if we look at some of the results here, it has the overall ROAS of 1.31. So now it's way overstating the total ROAS, uh, 1.31 relative to 1.16. But look at the difference between ROAS 1 and ROAS 2, 1.06 versus 1.55. Now, while these aren't necessarily accurate per se, we know that they should have been closer to 0.98 and 1.35 directionally we're really getting it right. So we have that ROAS one is basically revenue is breaking even relative to spend and media channel two is quite a bit better. And so if we saw these results, the business would probably make the correct decision that we're going to shift a little bit of money out of media spend one and into media spend two. And that would be the optimal choice, but look at the MAE and look at the MAPE. So the MAE in the last one was something like 8.8, .8, and you can see it has increased to 9.02. The MAPE has also slightly increased to just about 9%, 8.95%. And so if we were comparing models, if we were using MAE or MAPE as model evaluation metrics, we could very reasonably say that the first model is better that the first model is more accurate at getting true bookings it's predicting true bookings but just because it predicts true bookings doesn't mean it's allocating it correctly across incremental bookings from channel one and incremental bookings from channel two and we actually end up getting a worse outcome in terms of relative ROAS in terms of how we would make the business decision even though, even though that first model was a little bit more accurate in total bookings. Now, do I have an answer to this? Like, is there some magic wand that you can, you can do? No, uh, that's what makes this so challenging. It makes it such a challenging field, but it is something that you need to be aware of that just because a model we're probably going to use in many cases, if you don't know any better, the model that has a better MAPE, I mean, or a better MAE or root means or whatever it is that you're going to use, you need to have some sort of model evaluation. But you also, to some extent, need to trust uh, your priors and know that predicting total bookings, which is what these model evaluation metrics are doing, you have to understand that this is distinct from accurately allocating or attributing bookings from one channel or the other and how that affects ROI. And so this is why if you're going to do one of these Bayesian models, having these geo-based experiments that you can use to feed the priors is going to be helpful. Um, and so again, even, even if you have 
a MAPE or an MAE with that is better with uninformed priors. The ideal, what you want for the business decision is usually a correct rank ordering of the different channels. And in those cases, I would probably feel better using informed priors when I have them, even if the MAPE or the MAE is slightly different. But if they are, if they are much worse, you probably need to do some digging and understand why it might be the case.